Blue belt fundamental movements. We've got some new stances to learn, and a bit more footwork before we go to defensive and offensive. So first up among the stances, we have low stance. Now, a low stance is like a walking stance, but where my front toe is, is where my heel's going to go. So it's a little bit longer. It's 50-50 body weight. Other rules are the same in terms of no more than 25 degrees outwards. Width of uh, your shoulders in the center line of your feet. Back leg straight, front leg bent over your toes, but slightly lower. So if I were to do my walking stance punch here to change to a low stance thrust, here it just kind of sneaks in a little bit lower. You'll also do at this point rear foot stance. Be very careful with rear foot stance, particularly in your pattern. Your back foot still has that same 15 degree angle that you have in an L stance. The same angle here. It's the front foot that's different. Instead of being toe lined up with heel, the toe is now in line with the center of your foot and it's angled 25 degrees with the heel off the ground. A bit more than a fist in between the heels for us tall skinny folk. It's technically a shoulder width, so you could technically do it from your parallel stance, but we tend to have it slightly longer than that. Okay, so from here, bend both of your legs and just lift that front heel off the ground slightly. Be very careful when you do this in your pattern that you don't over angle that back foot because then your body angle is too much and you get killed because you, you've got too much tiger on display. So this foot's 15 degrees and the other foot's turned 25 degrees. Very common to shift from an elf stance to a rear foot stance because that distance there is quite significant for missing things like side kicks. So that's your rear foot stance. We've closed ready stance B, the ready position for drill good. Close stance. B is with your hands in front of your obliques. So nice and simple there. And the last foot movement that we have, a new foot movement that we have at Blue Belt Level is foot shifting with a single foot. And this is simply when you move from one stance into another stance while only moving one foot and not going forwards or backwards. So from here, if I'm going from walking stance to L stance to rear foot stance to fixed stance, this is all single foot foot shifting. It starts to become very obvious in Jungun and also in the next pattern in Taige to make sure that your L stance to walking stance foot shifting is very clear. It's a very different stance. You're quite narrow in the stance and a little bit shorter, so you have to go wider to make your walking stance. So make sure that's very clear. That's single foot foot shifting. Okay, now moving into defensive techniques. We have reverse knife hand side block. First movement of Jungun. Crosses just like uh, back for side strike or an inner forearm middle block. In fact, the movement's very much like an inner forearm middle block, except you're opening your hand out and blocking with your reverse knife hand. Just this way. Give me a bit of walking stance. Okay, to the chest line. It's just a change from your knuckles at shoulder height with your inner forearm to your fingertips at shoulder height blocking with your reverse knife hand. So quite a simple one, that one. Uh, palm upward block is the next one. This is a movement where you start with both hands in front of you, one hand pulls back to your hip and the blocking hand circles around like a big red beach ball and then knocks it up in the air. This is palm up the block. So both hands have to work together here and then pull back and knock it up. Okay, palm up the block. We have X-fist rising block. So another type of rising block, this time blocking with your X-fist. So this is your X-fist. One hand in front of the other. The front leg is the same as the front hand. So if I'm in walking stance, with my left foot forward, my left hand is in front. It crosses about in front of the solar plexus and just rises up this way. Just okay, and you should be able to just see under where your forearms cross. So same thing, not too far out here because it won't block. Not too close, about a fist in between. That's your finished position there. It's this rising block here. Uh, then we have palm pressing block. Palm pressing block in low stance and a walking stance, which is what you're going to do in pattern jump good, it's always accompanied with a palm upward block with the other hand. So it kind of looks like this. Okay, this is your pressing hand. But to get balance with your two hands, the other hand comes upward. So from here we're going. Fingertips are kind of in line this way. I've got to drop my elbow a bit so I can turn my hand out because I've got to keep my wrist straight. I'm not going to do this. 
somebody kicks that, whoa, life's going to hurt. So I need to drop my elbow a little bit and angle my hand so I can take the kick on that palm. Okay, this way. Start here, change hands. And this one's the height of your solar plexus. Same as it is here, it's the same height as your solar plexus. Okay, so that's palm pressing block. U-shaped block, an unusual block actually. This is designed for someone attacking with a stick. It looks kind of weird, but when it's explained to you, it makes a bit of sense. From here, I start with both hands up, both palms up, loosely clenched, and in fact, my back hand is kind of facing a little bit forward. And from here, I'm just gonna scoop in this way. My fingertips, I'm blocking with my reverse knife hand here, okay? And my thumbs out, so if someone's attacking with the pole, I can kind of catch the pole with my thumbs here. So they line up this way. This one's elbow nice and tight into my body, and this one extends so that my fingers line up. Okay, so this is a U-shaped block. From here, imagine a bit of a circle. So if I'm going from one side to the other, one and two, and one and two. Okay, a nice little block. Now, not what attacks with a stick like this. That's not what it's designed for. If someone attacks with a stick down this way and you block it, the bottom end of the stick is naturally going to follow through with the momentum. So you don't catch both parts of the stick at the same time. You'll catch one part and then with the momentum the, the other part will follow through. So it might be up first or it might be down first. Blocking this way. Okay, so that's that U-shaped block. Now your attacks. I mentioned earlier in an earlier video that we have uh, elbows are usually named, uh, the tool is named based on the different movement that you're doing. In this grade we have upper elbow. Upper elbow is actually the same part of your elbow as the front elbow, but it's going upward this way, with your palm down towards your shoulder. Other hand pulling back to your hip. Now it's done a reverse for obvious reasons, I'm not going to hit anything like this, because my leg's in the way. So here it's done reverse, full facing, and extend the other hand out, relax my hands, pull the elbow up this way. Stops about the height of my eyes here. There we go, upper elbow strike. And the next one is twin fist vertical punch. We've got a couple of twin fist movements in this pattern. We haven't done vertical punch before. Twin fist vertical punch, both hands start slightly in front of your shoulders, palm up, nice and relaxed in front of, at about chest height. And then from here, they're gonna come in a little bit. And as they turn, boom, we're gonna smash my opponent this way. It's called a twin fist vertical punch because your fists are kind of vertical, but they're angled a little bit. Imagine your two fists coming into the cheekbones. It can be done for two targets, but at this level, most of our techniques are done with one target in mind. So from here, relax your hands, come back a little bit, and drive forward with your punches. Very, very powerful feeling movement with all your mass behind it. Okay, the next one is your twin fist upset punch. And similarly, we haven't done an upset punch yet, but the twin fist upset punch is designed this way. This is an upset punch. You start palm down, you twist and drive palm forward this way, and you're doing that with both hands. So your hands circle. They don't come behind your hips, because then your shoulders get too tense. Here, and then come straight forward this way. Then the width of your hips apart, designed for two opponents. Can't be done for one opponent. It has to be done for two. From here, relax hands, pull circle back, and then drive forward. And it, start, it goes just forward of your ribs here. Just slightly forward of your ribs. And very slight upward angle, but tiny, tiny upward angle. Okay, so it's not dead flat, but it's not up like this. Just here, from here. That's your twin fist upset punch. We have angle punch. So you've got a lot of new movements at Blue Belt because after this we've got the flying kicks we're going to do. The angle punch is designed for somebody really close. It's this way. Okay, so someone's standing beside me here. My fist ends up in line with my badge, chest line. And it's kind of, my forearm's kind of parallel to my body, so that's how close it is. Other hand extends out in front, this one's palm up, and then boom, driving this way. Stopping at the chest line, stopping at the nipple. Don't punch over to the shoulder, just stopping here. One, two. Can be done in multiple stances, okay? Uh, you can be, can you imagine maybe doing it closed stance, can be doing it sitting stance, can be doing all sorts of stances. But generally full facing, so not an L stance, for example, that doesn't make any sense. Sitting stance, walking stance, those sorts of things. Now you've got flying kicks. You've got three flying kicks to do at this level. Flying front, flying turning, and flying side. I've got a very low ceiling here, so I'm going to take this very easy. 
Uh, but from here, front kicks. Now, flying, when you're doing flying kicks, that means you're kicking while your body's in the air. So you want to jump up and kick when you're in the air. You can either kick with your front leg, you can kick with your rear leg, and you've got multiple ways of jumping. I can do a one foot jump, I can do a two foot jump, I can do a scissor jump. This way. Fly front kicks, just a flat kick, front kick while flying. So the same motion that we've done before, we're just doing that in the air. Generally you want to aim for targets above your own solar plexus. Get up, get your body up. I've got to be very careful with this ceiling. Turn your kick similarly. Just, this is your turn your kick on the ground, turn your kick in the air. Same thing, one leg take off, two foot take off, scissor action take off. With those movements, you want to make sure that in fact, for all flying kicks, when you're in the air, you want to tuck your other leg up nice and tight. Last one, side piercing kick, same thing. Side kick on the ground. Easiest way to do a side kick in the air is a one foot jump. Tucking the other leg up. Two foot jumps are a little bit harder, and it's usually the front leg. And pull the other foot back up as you're kicking. This is your tuck. So imagine we're using two hands, we're using two feet. So from here, this way. Go, we've got about half an hour at least to practice all that stuff. Go for it.